Let's now talk about authentication factors, design and attributes. And this is a very, very interesting topic that I personally love to talk about. Now, when it comes to the authentication factors, there are three main factors. It's either it is something that you know, something that you have, or it could be something that you are or that you do. Now, when it comes to the something you know authentication, this would include things like your passwords, uh, passphrases or even pins. So the something you know authentication factor can also be referred to as the knowledge factor. It's also used for account reset mechanisms. So for example, you're trying to reset your uh, the password for your email. Typically, the email server would ask you, okay, a security question that you've answered before. So there's something you know authentication is by far the most popular authentication method now something you have this is also referred to as the ownership factor this means that you or the account holder will possess something that no one else does it could be like a smart card a hardware token even your smartphone now something that you are or that you do authentication also known as the biometric factor can use either physiological identifiers like your fingerprints or behavioral identifiers such as the way uh, someone walks or talks. Now, as I was recording this video, I got the idea to show you a clip from the movie Mission Impossible 5, Rogue Nation, that came out back in 2015. Now, here's an example of the biometric factor in place. The system is trying to gauge whether or not this particular uh, gentleman walking is who he claims to be. He's actually wearing a mask. He's pretending to be somebody else. So he's walking through this particular uh, hall that has this kind of trying to gauge whether or not he's walking like the real person. And because the way he walks is actually different, the system was able to identify that this is a fraud. This is somebody pretending to be someone else. So if you want to watch the entire movie, you can check it out. It's actually a pretty good action movie, Mission Impossible or uh, Rogue Nation. All right, so as we just saw right now, the biometric factor will use either physiological identifiers like your fingerprints or behavioral identifiers such as the way somebody can walk or talk. Now, we also have the multi-factor authentication. Now, this will combine the use of more than one authentication factor and can either be two-factor or a three-factor authentication. So, multi-factor authentication would require a combination of different technologies or factors. For example, if you were to combine requiring a PIN along with a date of birth, this isn't multi-factor because even though it becomes a bit more difficult for a hacker to break through because now they need to know two different things, the factors in play here are still the knowledge factor. The knowledge factor of knowing what the PIN is and the knowledge factor of knowing what the date of birth is. When you combine two knowledge factors, it is still a single factor authentication, not multi-factor. Now, we do have the authentication design. Now, this refers to selecting a technology that will satisfy the CIA requirements. And of course, the CIA being confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Now, you do have authentication attributes. When you compare authentication attributes to authentic authentication factors, an authentication attribute is either a non-unique property or a factor that cannot be used independently. Examples would be somewhere that you are, something that you can do, something you exhibit, or someone that you know. Now, somewhere you are authentication. This could be things like the geographic location measured using your device's location service or IP address. Now, this isn't typically used as a primary authentication factor, but it may be used as a continuous authentication mechanism. Something you can do, this will involve the behavioral characteristics such as the way you walk or the way you hold your smartphone. It can be used to identify you to a considerable degree of activity. Now, something you exhibit. This also refers to a behavioral-based authentication and authorization with specific emphasis on personality traits, such as the way you use your smartphone apps or 
your web search engine history. And then finally, the someone you know authentication. Now, this uses a web of trust model where new users are simply vouched for by existing users. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class.